name is Julie Tackett, and I'm a volunteer with Natural Land Institute. And today, we are going to talk about the wonderful migration of monarch butterflies. Welcome to our story about the marvelous monarch migration from the Midwest to Mexico. But first, before we talk about that, let's talk about the monarch butterfly, what it is, and why it's important. The monarch is an amazing butterfly that migrates like a bird. It's the only butterfly to do so, as a matter of fact. But let's talk about migration a little bit later. Monarchs are pollinators, meaning they go from flower to flower and they get the nectar out of the flowers and pollinate them. So we have our fruits, our vegetables, and of course, the flowers that you see in a prairie or in your backyard. A monarch lays its egg on a special plant called a milkweed. These plants are found along the route that the monarchs fly each year. I bet you could go outside right now and find a monarch egg on one of your monarch plants. It is so small, it's so tiny, and it's a little white dot, the size of a pinhead, and that would be a monarch egg. And in just a few short days, that monarch will hatch into a beautiful caterpillar. Now, my friends, let's talk about migration. Migration is a word that you might have heard in science class, but what does it mean? What is it? Migration is when a bird, an animal, or an insect flies from its location to a different one. Maybe the weather is getting a little cooler or maybe their food sources have run out. Any reason for them to keep going on and surviving is pretty neat if you ask me. But let's do this. Let's pretend summer is over now. Oh, right? You have to put on your sweatshirts, maybe go to school. Oh, school's starting. Well, guess what? There's something inside the monarch that realizes maybe it's time for me to leave too. And they have a long journey ahead of them. Now, we don't really 100% know why monarchs know how to migrate like they do. Some people think it has to do with the Earth's magnetic field. They also know that sometimes it's based on temperature, air temperature, um, the wind, the change of pattern in the wind. Um, they also think at times that um, they follow the sun. It's really interesting, but nobody is 100% sure why the monarchs migrate the way they do. But all I can tell you is generation after generation, they know where to go. And that honestly is just simply amazing. Because of this, monarchs cannot survive our cold winters in Illinois. You know, monarchs can't build snowmen. <laughs> so where else are they gonna go? They want to go where it's warmer. There's some monarchs that will migrate to California if they're already a little further west in the United States. But the monarchs that are in the eastern part, including Illinois, they take a route that goes over Texas deep into the mountains of Mexico. They will go there by the millions and they have a very particular tree that they like to go on to. It's called the Oyamo fir tree. And it's in a forest that is two miles up in the mountains in Mexico. Two miles, that is really tall. If you were to be the lucky person to go and see them in Mexico, you would see them clustered together by the thousands. What do these trees do for them? They provide protection. We all wanna be safe, just like we live in a house. Well, they live in these trees. These trees protect them from wind, snow, and rain. The monarchs aren't really eating very much in the winter. Sometimes they'll find a little bit of nectar or they'll sometimes go on the soil and find a little bit of moisture and minerals. In February or March, they decide it's time to make the journey back. Now this is where things get a little complicated because there are different generations of monarchs. So when they start coming back, the first monarch that was in Mexico will lay an egg and that egg will hatch into a beautiful monarch. They will live for a few weeks and that monarch will then also hatch another egg and they will do this three to four times to make that journey all the way up to where we live here in northern Illinois. Then there's another generation that will stick around for a little bit and probably in June or July you might start seeing those eggs I talked about on your milkweed plants and they will eat at those plants and you can tell because there'll be holes in the leaves and the monarch caterpillar will grow from just a tiny little guy to a very large caterpillar and then he will hang on his branch that he chooses and turn into this beautiful black chrysalis and emerge as a butterfly. 
Now, that is a lot of work for these butterflies, but there's one generation, the last generation, around September, that will hatch its butterflies, and that is the monarch that will fly down to Mexico, make that long journey and went over winter or stay in Mexico for the winter. And that's the one that starts the cycle all over again. So simply, these monarchs are magnificent. They're marvelous, they're amazing. I think it's Mother Nature's, one of its finest works, how they can figure out how, how to get where they need to go based on just a compass in their brain, using the earth, using the wind, using the sky, the sun. Oh. So anyway, next time you see a monarch butterfly, don't simply look at it as just, oh, a beautiful butterfly, which of course it is, but really think about it and think about how hard they work and what their purpose is to help all of our plants and flowers bloom. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, if you can, plant some milkweed at your own house and give them a safe place to stay. I hope you learned a little bit about the marvelous monarch migration from the Midwest to Mexico. It's an amazing journey to say the least. Thank you, bye-bye.